All right, so welcome everybody. It's Wednesday, it's my um, Wednesday noon question and answers. And today I have a very special guest. I've got with me Stephanie McGarrell. And so um, I'm just gonna let Stephanie just do a real um, kind of brief introduction for those of you that haven't met her before. And then we'll let you start asking some questions. Hi everybody, um, so I am Stephanie, a stay-at-home mom. I've got two kids, I'm 42 years old, my kids are four and six, so I started late. And yes, I'm crazy. <laughs> um, for most of my life, I was the obese person. I was always the big kid in the class, the big girl in the group of friends, never lived a healthy lifestyle until 2017 um, after almost dying from some blood clots in my leg and my lungs um, I kind of woke up I knew the food had to to change I knew I needed to make some serious changes I had lost a lot of mobility from being so inflamed I was in pain every day I was on at least seven prescription medications so at the end of 2017 at 330 pounds I said enough and started with uh, the ketogenic diet accidentally at first. And then I gave in and realized it was okay to identify as a keto girl. And I uh, started incorporating intermittent fasting and keto low carb and sometimes even carnivore approaches as part of my life. Lost 150 pounds in a year and have been just continuing to learn as I go, find out what works, what doesn't, when it's time to change things up. And I'm here for it. I just, uh, I, I love, I love everything about pursuing health at this point. That's me in a nutshell. <laughs> <laughs> well, Stephanie, you have so much to share. You know, the time that you spent with, uh, you know, Jason, Dr. Fung with intermittent fasting. But uh, today is meant to be questions and answers because so basically who we have, we've got folks that have been on the two week keto challenge with uh, diet doctor. And um, basically the meals have been three meals a day, three square mm -hmm. meals a day, essentially. And uh, I know that some and some people have tried keto before, and I think they have a few questions maybe that they'd like to ask you. So anyone that would like to go first, questions for Stephanie? Um, I, hi, I'm April. Hi, April. Um, I'm just curious about the bloating. And when you say carnivore, do you um, delete all of your vegetables out of your diet and just do fats and meat? Yeah. And so, um, it kind of happens as a progression for some people. Um, some people have really hardcore health issues that go long, like a long time in their life and go really deep. And, um, you know, we've all been ingrained, even when like we approach healthy eating more often than not, the first thing people will tell you is like, Oh, you know, plant-based and Oh, veggies, and you need all your veggies and eight to 10 cups of veggies. And you need so much green, so much green. But then you find a lot of people saying, but I'm constipated or bloated. And then they say, well, add more fiber. And so then, the, then they're having literally putting like their body weight worth of spinach jammed into um, a food processor or a blender. But then they're saying, I haven't pooped in three days. And so then they're like, oh, well, you better add fiber, add, add some flaxseed, add some chia seeds. And then they're bunged up even more. And then they look like they're seven months pregnant. And so there's been a lot of discovery that some people are finding that to kind of like simplify it because I'm not a scientist or a doctor and I feel a little bit out of my league with with Tiffany but um, a lot of people have started to find out that for various reasons like digestive issues that have gone on for a long time or oxalates which is part of what comes with some plant-based stuff people find that it actually causes more problems for them and um, and so they they'll say okay for 30 days just try reducing your diet to fatty meat carnivore. And so then, then there's a lot of fears about, well, isn't that too much protein? But it's not because like, for example, to make a ketogenic macro or a carnivore macro look good when you just look at an egg, one egg is like the perfect food between the yolk and the white is it's amazing for protein and fat. But in order to make the macros be right for keto or carnivore, you would take an egg and then the equivalent of about a tablespoon of fat so like an egg with some butter like a boiled egg and butter would be ideal so it is it is about prioritizing your protein but also making sure that it's it's not so much like lean chicken breasts every day and lean turkey sausage and turkey bacon because 
<clears throat> you'll just end up feeling starving. And so it's prioritizing your protein, but they, they always say like, you know, more so in the fatty meat, like a, a ribeye or wings, like, you know, when you're getting more of that cartilage and the collagen off the, the bones and the cartilage. And, and so, you know, um, and really too, like some people say like, well, what about your micronutrients that you normally get from your vegetables and your vitamins? But that's where you can start to incorporate organ meat. And I know it sounds terrifying and gross to some people, but I, like, I literally have had cow heart blended in with my ground beef. You don't know what's there, but you're getting all these micronutrients. Now it's not for everybody. I try, I have tried a stint in carnivore. I did world carnivore month, January, 2019. I didn't find it was for me, but then I also realized I was taking cheese away also. And then I was replacing my cheese with just a lot more food and meat. And so I was overeating all the time. Um, but some people find that they absolutely reach a better level of satiety when it comes to having meat and veggies. And some people find that all that does is cause digest digestion issues and intestinal discomfort and bloating. And so there literally are people, it's not made up because people say like, but veggies make me blow or they make my stomach hurt. You're not making it up. It really is a thing. And some people genuinely get better optimized with their health when they leave veggies out. Now, some people will do carnivore for a month and heal their gut that quickly. Maybe they're not super metabolically damaged. Some people do it for a year and never go back. Some people do it for six months and say, oh, I tried adding back in um, some spinach with the a dish and I felt good. So tomorrow I'm going to try some cabbage and it feels good. Like some people find only certain veggies bother them. And so veggies can be a problem for some people and it sounds crazy, but it's really not like, you're not crazy. If you say veggies make me bloat like crazy. And then I don't poop for three days. I assure you, you're not crazy. <laughs> so I think what, and thanks for going over the, the carnivore, um, Stephanie. And I think with some people too, they it's all depends on their baseline where they're getting started and right. sometimes bloating can be constipation right like that is that is a common side <clears throat> effect that you kind of start with on keto well another thing just like unrelated to carnivore and unrelated to vegetables but very much in keeping with not just keto but more so early on keto when people are getting started you'll find there even with diet doctor and that's where i started okay i started with diet doctor at the one year mark, they featured me. So like diet doctor is the backbone of where this all began for me. But something I found out and I did it too, is a lot of foods all of a sudden become uh, heavy with almond flour, coconut flour. But the thing is how many people will take a bowl of dry unsalted almonds and eat them and enjoy them by a, by a huge bowl full. Most of us wouldn't, you'd be like four almonds in you're like, I'm eating tree bark. I'm literally chewing on tree bark and it's not enjoyable. I hate everything about my life right now. But, and then funny, we start with keto. What do we do? I'm gonna take 4,000 almonds. I'm gonna blend them up into a powder and then make all my food with it. And then you're shocked when your gut feels like you have a brick that you're trying to pass because we weren't meant to process that many nuts at one time. Nuts are very high fat and they are high protein, but it takes your body a while to like really break that down. And so I know diet doctors big on fat head dough and pizzas and stuff like that. But I found like the further I got away from replacing my meals with almond flour, the more nutrient density and food I was getting in healthy. Because if I had a fat head dough pizza, yeah, of course it was, it was delicious. I probably wouldn't eat my Caesar side salad. <laughs> but if I started with the side salad and then just had the toppings of the pizza and forgo the almond flour, like, but I did, I do find between like, you need eight to 10 cups of veggies at every meal and let's make everything with almond flour. Your body's like, I don't know what you're doing to me, but I got to process all that. So can we take a break? Yeah, and so true. And that's why I think too, a lot of people go, because they want to get into baking and all these sorts of things, which is why if they can start with whole foods, like real foods, meat and veg, whatever, um, they can be better off. Um, and, but what are the things that you've used, Stephanie, for yourself? Like if you do get into trouble with constipation, for example. So I don't, <laughs> even on fasting, like I poop every day with fasting. And uh, by the way, we're all friends now. And I talk about poop every day. It's not weird. <laughs> okay. Um, in saying that, I do realize that part of my nightly routine is I do take a magnesium supplement. So early on, even before keto, um, I used to be really, really prone to leg cramps just all the time. And right back to my last pregnancy. And so 
I started adding natural calm, uh, which is a powdered version of magnesium citrate. Some people are like, uh, no, because I'll have disaster pants. <laughs> so magnesium citrate can make you go too much. So if you're someone who doesn't have trouble, you may want to go more to a, a different magnesium like glycinate. That's fine. But for me, I do take magnesium citrate as a powder every evening. Um, unfortunately, sometimes if I, if I am fasting and take that, then my body's like, woo, okay, let's empty ourselves out. But um, as far as food goes, like I could eat a lot of nuts and cheese and uh, it'll slow me down for a bit. But there's a difference between not pooping every day and being constipated. And people will panic. They're like, well, I haven't gone in three days. I'm like, yeah, but were you intermittent fasting and eating one meal a day? Your body may not have had a chance to break down enough waste. So there's, there's a fine line between I just don't need to go today versus I'm constipated. But I definitely find if you are someone who struggles with constipation, um, keeping your sodium, your salts in the right levels will help. And um, hello, salt flush <laughs> or magnesium citrate absolutely will help. Like, think about it. If you have to have... Uh, a colonoscopy they'll give you a bottle of citromeg and say here you go have a good day on the couch drinking this and don't crap your pants <laughs> so you know magnesium citrate works kind of like uh draino for your gut <laughs> <coughs> uh, stephanie one person i'll just say they had a question they i'm guessing that they've been on the program now for s almost nine or ten days and they said that they didn't lose weight or did you really you're on mute, April. I'm on mute, sorry. Yeah, I um, actually feel like I gained and uh, I feel like I'm nine months pregnant from all the bloating. Have you had a lot of veggies in those 10 days? Uh, no, like my salad would be like the half a cup of romaine. Um, there might've been an odd day that I might've had maybe an extra leaf of lettuce or, but not a whole lot of veggies. And I'm finding the, the I'm so not used to having fat, butter, grease. I, I do cook with olive oil before this, but to me, it's an unusual amount of fat. So it okay. almost kind of sits in my stomach. Like it almost at, in the beginning, it nauseated me to be honest. So the thing with fat and, um, sometimes I get frustrated, not at, not at anyone here in general. I mean, sometimes I get frustrated because, um, right out the gate, you know, we're trying to rewire our brains from the low fat, synthetic food to higher fat and so I think sometimes we get in over our heads thinking I've got to hit that target I need to hit my fat macro and so maybe you have been having too much fat um you know there's a, a nurse whose husband is like world renowned as the carnivore doctor she's a labor and delivery nurse and she likes to remind us that we need to burn the we need to how does she say it she was talking about people who add butter to their coffee but she was saying you need to burn the fat in your glass before you're gonna burn the fat on your ass. <laughs> and so maybe you have been having too much or maybe it's, you know, maybe too much um, on the dairy side. There's lots of people like I, you probably can't see it here over there. That's a jar of uh, butter flavored coconut oil. Um, I did 14 months of dairy-free keto. I found it was too much. Um, I. I ate for four days straight in preparation for my fast and haven't evacuated yet. Like my body's just like, I don't know what you just did, but we're going to hang on to it and think about it. Um, the thing with fat is that the only target you should be aiming for is your protein. You need the amino acids, you need the building blocks, you need the protein, but if you're eating fatty meat, there's absolutely no reason you need to be adding fat. Um, on my page, I put a pinned post that said, keep it simple, pick your protein, always pick your protein as the focal point of your plate. And then you use fat to cook it in, to make it taste good, to make it flavorful and to keep you full. Pick your veggies unless you're carnivore, but literally just that simply. And so it, it, there, there's something to be said about adding too much fat if you didn't actually need it in the first place. Fat is just to make your taste food taste better. Like what tastes better, an egg fried in a T-fowl nonstick pan or scrambled eggs slowly scrambled with butter? Of course the egg scrambled in butter. But it doesn't mean you need to add four pads of butter afterwards if you fried your egg. Like that's called exogenous fat. You're adding fat that you may not need. Later when you become more fat adapted or you have maybe lost 40 pounds and your body's going, okay, I need to change it up. Then maybe you need to increase your dietary fat. But if you're starting out, you may not need as much as what they make it sound like you need. And so maybe for you, maybe you've had too much of it for your body to to tolerate or maybe it's the wrong fats maybe you would do better with 
the olive oil. There's nothing wrong with cooking with olive oil, despite what some people say about the smoke point. Dr. James DeNicolantonio has great information about why cooking with olive oil is actually fine. So does some of that make sense maybe, April? Yeah, because I was literally adding the fat that they were telling me to lettuce just to get the fat in. Yeah, and that's a common concept of, like I'm in a group called Lazy Keto for Women lazy not meaning we're lazy people lazy keto meaning we just don't track okay we just don't track and maybe you're in the group there's over 200,000 women and that's one of the most common comments is help it's almost the end of the day and i'm looking over my macros i've hit my protein my carbs are under 20 but i haven't hit that fat macro and people are trying to hit the macro they're like how do i get more fat into me without increasing my protein too high and it's like you don't you don't need to. Fat is for flavor and satiety. That's it. You know, and then like, because they say keto is high fat, again, we go right for the hype. Well, how do I get it in me? And then like, that's why there's always jokes about everyone eating sticks of butter. And it's like, that's never been what it was supposed to be. It's just gotten skewed and social media has blown that up. And of course they take one or two pieces of something and then they roll with it. But it's such a common misconception that keto is high fat in the sense of get all the fat in you that you can. But it's high fat, meaning it's higher fat than what we're used to. But some people may set their macros and put their fat at 80% because they need to and they're healing stuff. Or maybe you need to set your fat closer to 60%. The bottom line is ketosis is a metabolic state that you're going to get into by keeping your carbs low enough. It has nothing to do with how high your fat is, literally. That was Phoebe. And, it, and it's good, Stephanie, because, you know, for me, so I'm in ketosis. I, you know, I don't really want to lose much. So I do have to make sure that I keep my fat up because I'm in, you know, I want to do it from a metabolic flexibility standpoint. Exactly. But you have to think that if you have fat on you, then that's less fat that you need to eat because your body's going to find the fat in your belly, in your hips, wherever it may be. <laughs> So anyone else have some questions for Steph? Because we could talk a whole lot, but we'll just let you guys, uh, if there's anything you want to discuss or just a topic for her. Um, Megan, the bloating. When will this end? I didn't hear what you said, April. Uh, the bloating. When will it go away? You said you were about day 10, right? Um, honestly, it's one of those things that could go away overnight. Um, I don't know what you've been eating. Like, obviously, I'm not a doctor. I don't know what you've been eating. I haven't seen your food logs. But the thing is, it, it's entirely possible that your body just hasn't shifted yet. There's all kinds of things like there's, they call it the whoosh. Your fat cells could be shifting and you could be just retaining water right now. Like, I don't know if you have any edema, if you press in on your legs um but it could just be a shift you could wake up tomorrow and see stars because your blood pressure could drop because you could dump a whole lot of fluid the other thing too is like if you're drinking a crazy amount of water and over hydrating then you're chasing out your electrolytes and so you could have a shift in electrolytes because you're not getting enough electrolytes back in like there's all kinds of variables um but bloat could be because of what you're eating it could be because of how much of what you're eating it could be electrolytes it could be maybe you haven't had a good poop it could be you haven't slept it's a lot of variables but definitely not dumping all your sodium by drinking like half your body weight in water it's, you're going to end up not feeling good for real but give it time, like 10 days is quick in. And you say, I haven't lost any weight. You don't know that you actually like, unless you had like a DEXA scan, you could have been shifting body fat, uh, body fat and losing fat, but your body may just be holding on to that fluid and hasn't dumped that yet, but it will, it will. And the first week's always exciting. Everyone's like, oh my gosh, I lost one fluid in the first week. And the week two, week three, they're like, well, I'm frustrated. I haven't lost anything, but give it time. Like, you know, we're all ladies here. So I mean, like, you think about when you were actively having your period, if you still do great, if not, you remember, think about it in the sense of like how long your cycle is like, and so you wouldn't weigh yourself on day one of your period and be like, damn it, I've, I've gained weight. Well, yeah, you're bloated. That's fine. Like but try to look at it in like a 30 day window. You can weigh yourself daily if that helps keep you on track and make sure you're not going crazy, but make sure you're looking at the bigger picture. 
and take measurements. Yeah, that's great, Stephanie. I know the measurements are a key thing for so many people um, mm -hmm. is, is seeing that shift or just feeling that the pants aren't so tight and, and, and uh, they're just moving a little bit more easily. Like I could show you a picture of last summer when I had gotten up to like 210 pounds and I was eating a lot of bad things, stupid things like good fat bars and things that had artificial sweeteners and a lot of added fibers. I was so bloated that in this picture, it looked like I was a sea of fluid. 210 pounds. And then COVID life and post-surgery, I, I gained a bit more. And then I started to lose again. I took a picture in December at the same weight, but I looked about 40 pounds lighter because I wasn't eating all the artificial things either. And so if you're having artificial sweeteners and, um, and uh, sucralose syrups in your coffees, watch those things because they will cause you to have insulin damage still. Um, they'll cause you to stall. They'll cause you to crave and bloat. I mean, I, I literally looked like if you popped me, I would have exploded last May when I took that picture. It was insane. And then the side by side. So it shows you that the scale is not telling you very much of the picture. And also, if you had pre-existing digestive issues, like if you have, you know, irritable bowel or Crohn's or some, or if you have autoimmune disease or thyroid disease, then those are things too that are going to make it more difficult in the beginning for things to switch. Um, it's not that it will switch because mm -hmm. there's no option. If carbs go down, insulin comes down. So it will switch. It's just a matter then of timing. We have a quiet bunch here. Stephanie. Yeah. So why don't you talk about, because people ask this, um, is just getting started with intermittent fasting. Yeah. Like, so when I started out, I was not intermittent fasting. I was eating from sunup to sundown as needed. So, you know, and that's what I always recommend to people when you're starting out, don't worry about how often you're eating and what time you're eating. Just focus on what you're eating. Keep the carbs low. Over time, you'll find out that, you know, that 8 PM handful of macadamia nuts can go. Cause you're like, okay, no, I feel fine. I've had three meals and a snack today, but I actually feel okay. So you just sort of drop that off. And then eventually you say, gosh, you know, it's 10 o'clock and I'm, I'm still not really hungry for breakfast, but I should eat because I, sh I should, I just should, but you don't have to, you know? And so it's just more of like going by what your body is comfortable with. And eventually you may, you may find, and some people don't, and that's okay. You may find that pushing out your first meal until lunchtime feels not just okay, it feels good. And you're like, oh, I sipped on my coffee and uh, I really didn't feel like I even needed to eat until then. And even then I kind of just, you know, I thought I better find it. So then you eat a meal and then five hours go by and you're like, I'm kind of hungry and you eat another meal. And then you, you think, I feel good. Next thing you realize you've shortened your eating window from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. to about a six or eight hour pocket of time. And then a month goes by and you see this massive shift in body composition and the scale. And that's the thing, the magic of intermittent fasting is no two people are gonna approach it the same. I don't approach it the same any, any time I do it. You know, every month and now at this point, year that goes by that I'm eating keto and incorporating fasting in my life, there, it's one of those things that in the beginning they say, you know, you wanna to get to a point where you're eating intuitively. Well, somebody who's overweight and doesn't have hormones in check are not going to know what that looks like, but eventually you do. Same with fasting. There's something to be said about fasting and eating intuitively. I've seen me get up from my couch and say, you know what, I'm going to fast tomorrow and put my leftovers in the freezer because I'm, I, I know that's what my body's saying. That's what I want to do. So, I mean, intermittent fasting is not a thing that is a keto thing. It has been around forever. Fasting is not new, but it couples nicely with a low carb diet. It just works really well because anytime you put food in your mouth, boom, you're turning on insulin. That's just how it works. So the fewer times you open your mouth and put food in it, the more time your body has to heal insulin, the more insulin sensitive you become, the more your body will drop the fat. It's just a chain. It's a chain reaction, but fasting feels good. When you get over your fear of fasting, it actually can feel really good. And then not only that, it makes your first meal taste even better. <laughs> um, and Stephanie, if you can talk about um, carbs, net carbs, 
versus whole carb counting and 20 grams versus 50 like what is your take or what's worked well for you when you when I started out I committed to learning what carbs look like in foods and made a note of it and then didn't track I don't like tracking tracking makes me snaky makes me stabby and it feels like games it feels like meal math and if it feels like math then it feels like work and I don't like it <laughs> and so when I started it oh yeah and so about that but like for me with tracking it became like a really messed up game because I was saying well if I have this tomorrow then if I had only half of the chicken breast then I could have an extra egg in this and I was like what am I like a mad scientist it just became ridiculous for me some people thrive on tracking I don't so regarding carbs, how did that look like if I wasn't tracking? Again, I committed to looking and learning what carbs looked like in foods. So I could know just offhand, like how much was probably in a bowl of keto chili or in my salad. And I started out under the, the belief that net carbs were all we really needed to worry about. Here's the problem with net carbs. And I set my target at 20, just because it was kind of what everyone did. Um, the hard thing with net versus total carbs is we talked earlier about almond flour, just as one example. The more mainstream keto becomes, the more keto certified products start appearing on shelves that are actually not keto at all. Because let's be honest here, there's no such thing as a keto food. Ketosis is a state that our body gets into for fat burning and we burns ketones and fat. There's no such thing as a food that can or cannot be keto. People freak out when I fry up coleslaw because there's trace amounts of carrots. Even net carbs or total carbs, I'm not gonna be going near my 20 with that. And so the problem is not whether you take net or total. The problem is what you're using to eat to get those carbs into you. If you're eating a lot of foods that have an ingredient label that's a paragraph long and you have to do meal math to get your number, total, take away the fiber, take away the allulose and take away the erythritol, this is not second grade math, okay? It's food and we're fueling our body, we should be nourishing it. So if you're talking about broccoli, you can do net carbs. Sure, go take, take away the fiber of broccoli. It's a one ingredient food, that's great, that's fine. But if you are eating foods that have a label, a package that you have to get a magnifying glass out to see, um, then you should look at total because I'm guilty of that. I'm like, oh, good fat bar, it's only four net carbs, eats four bars. 23 total carbs. I've just eaten a week's worth of carbs because it's fine. Net carbs are only three, four. It's no problem. And then you wonder why you're bloated and why you feel like garbage. Garbage in, garbage out. So uh, honestly, if you're keeping it to real whole foods, go ahead and count um, net. Subtract the fiber out of your broccoli and your romaine hearts. But if, if you're doing that, you don't even really need to track them anyway because you're not going to overeat romaine hearts. Trust me, I've tried. I eat a whole romaine heart as one meal. Like I'll put like a massive dollop of Renee's, a handful of Parmesan petals, a chicken breast, a bunch of bacon and a salad as big as my head. You're not gonna go over your total carbs even by doing that. You start adding things that have a package or a label and you have to do meal math to find out how many carbs are in it, you're getting into trouble. What about for nuts, Stephanie? Do you look at net or, to uh, or total? Well, that's what I'm saying. Net, net carbs, if you're eating real whole foods, is great. If you're adding packaged stuff, you better look at total because you're kidding yourself. You are. You're lying, you're lying to yourself. If you're eating them, that's fine. Own it. Claim it as total. No one's going to judge you. You're not going to get in trouble by the keto police if you eat packaged stuff. It tastes, they taste good. That's fine. But you start doing it every day, I'm telling you, it will add up. And you're going to get in trouble. And you're going to be bloated. And you're going to have pains in your stomach and you're going to be making some very uh lovely bum music and who knows what else so i don't recommend it and for the love of god do not eat maltitol russell stovers don't do it don't do it it's not worth it or wear diapers whichever <laughs> so maltitol is one of those sugars she's talking about you yeah, need to avoid the one thing that you know i've seen many patients in the past and they've kind of come in that you know they get happy with keto then they want to try these different keto treats and you're right like buying stuff like that's keto friendly food and this is exactly what happens because they go over the limit and then they realize why am i not losing anymore but when you just shift back to the whole sources of food then that's always better what you're at but but sure it's fine on a sunday or something to have like 
a cake with your family. Like you might make a big cheesecake or, or something like this. And then you can have those treats, but they should still be seen almost as treats and not part of a daily keto lifestyle. Yeah, like it's just like one thing I've been pursuing for the last little while and working really hard on is um, remembering that it's just food. We don't need to vilify food, right? It's just food. Like I went out with my friend in October. I'm celiac, so I do get nervous at restaurants, but I went to a restaurant. I reviewed their menu ahead of time and I opted for a cauliflower crust pizza. It wasn't all cauliflower. It definitely was not a keto pizza. It was just gluten-free, way higher in carbs than anything I'd eaten in two, three years. Um, but I did it anyway, because I had to remind myself and it, it's kind of sad that I had to remind myself, it's just food. You know, it's not going to make or break you if you have a treat meal. And I do not ever use the word cheat. I don't cheat. Who are you cheating? We can have treats, but don't vilify it. And likewise, on the flip side, don't take foods that people say, though, oh, that's the best keto foods to eat. Because remember, we said there's no such thing as a keto food. Don't put those foods up on a pedestal. They're just food. At the end of the day, it's what you're nourishing your body with or damaging your body with. It's just food. It, it It's not, you know... You can't put it on a pedestal, but you don't need to vilify it either. And I need to remind myself of that all the time. I make food choice. They're just choices. You made your choice. You don't need to flog yourself. You know, there's no tar and feather involved. It's probably not keto anyway. And, you know, a lot of this comes back to the mindset, right? Uh, and this is what's been so ingrained for many people that have done diets again and again and again. It's this cycle of, I eat the food, I feel guilty, then I feel bad, and then it just comes back again and again. And so when we change the way, even the words that we use, mm -hmm. it's so important that food is food and food can be nourishment for our body. And, and I know many people uh, in the programs, and we, when we look at that, we slow down to eat, we pay attention to the meal. We don't just shovel it in. Even with keto, it sure it tastes good, but you don't wanna shovel it. You take time to digest it. You take time to enjoy the taste of everything that goes in. So and that's that why I get in trouble with those bars. Like you take um, a good to go bar. It's what four bites. And you're like, I just basically ate a brownie. It was a brownie. Let's be honest. It was a brownie. <laughs> it wasn't, but it was. And I mean, like you sit there and eat, you know, uh, bacon and Brussels sprouts roasted. It's going to take you longer to eat and chew those things too than a quick bar, oh, like just down the hatch. You're going to feel more nourished if you're picking real foods too and it doesn't have to be difficult i spend i eat like an unusual amount of just as cheap as i can buy ground beef just ground beef i can't afford ribeyes we're a single low-income family of four keep it simple i get really sad when people are like oh i would love to do keto i really am desperate to lose the weight i need to do it but i just can't afford it i don't know about you guys where you all are but I mean, a dozen eggs is what, two bucks? And ground beef is usually like 288 a pound. Done. Cheap. And, and folks, this is coming from Stephanie. She's lost 150 pounds. She's off of seven medications now. She's out, she's walking, she's exercising, she's playing with her kids if you've seen any of her photos. So, um, Stephanie, we're just over the half hour mark. And I said, I just have 30 minutes of your time. So um, it's been so wonderful to have you here. Uh, I am going to get this re ready with a whole list of all like Stephanie's little takeaway <laughs> comments. Um, but it's I just applaud you for your effort and feeling Thank good you. in your body. And that is the goal I think that we all want. We just want to feel good. We want to be Absolutely. there for us, our families, you know, our children. Um, so hopefully we'll check in again sometime soon, maybe in a month or two. Let me know. And you guys can hit me up on my public pages. I'm hosting a 40 day, 40 days of focus event right now. So everything under the sun, today's the beginning of Lent. So that's what I'm up to. And you can find me on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube eventually. And I'll leave you guys now. Nice to right. chat. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Stephanie. Bye everyone.